I'm nor an engineer or a medical professional. So there you have it. I'm a former actor and comedian, so hopefully I can entertain for the next seven minutes or so. Show of hands, how many folks understand and know the Continual Health Alliance? A handful of hands, okay. Good enough. Um, so our vision is to, so the good news is that um, we have a trade association of about 250 members strong, um, absolutely focused on creating a system, a system of connected health, uh, personal health devices and back ends. Um, a lot of talk about systems over lunch. Uh, so the good news is I think we have a lot of momentum here in an organization that's been in place for about five years. And I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview. Uh, and for you that do understand Continua, this will be a very high level overview of, of where we're at. Um, lots of big companies doing lots of interoperable uh, joint collaborative solutions. So that's the good news. The challenging news is that this is really difficult to do to get a number of big companies in the same room uh, with vested interests today and, and um, uh, to collaborate for a big, a much bigger and, and somewhat undefined future. But we're very encouraged with the um, set of promoter partners that we have on board, you know, the who's who of, of devices uh, to systems to um, uh, medical professionals, i.e. providers. Um, Partners Health was a very big uh, supporter of Continual Health Alliance some time ago. Um, we have Essentia Health, Peace Health in, in, in the West Coast as well. Lots of companies. So we're about 250 members, about five, year in, five years in, in place. So the challenge I think we all uh, can appreciate, um, we have an unsustainable healthcare system. Let's just stop there. Um, how are we going to create a future that um, tries to generate a preventative care system um, that everyone in the ecosystem can be compensated for? And that's the challenge today. How do you sell a device into that economy? How do you uh, fundamentally subsidize that economy from a payer perspective? How does a health delivery system fundamentally look at patients for the, over the lifetime of that patient, i.e. as a consumer, and extract value throughout the lifetime of that consumer? Um, I'm speaking like a marketer now. And that DNA is something that's missing in our industry. Uh, and one that uh, I think, um, as we all put our collective heads together, are going to try to do the right thing, both at a regulatory level, at a payer level. And I think at a technology level, you'll see some of these interfaces. The technology itself is actually quite, um, and again, I'm not the engineer in the room, but quite straightforward is the way I would uh, characterize it. Continua focuses on three domain uh, or usage cases, uh, all familiar probably to everybody in this room. Um, one very much uh, what we refer to as fitness and wellness or health and wellness, uh, very much focused on, on what I would qualify or characterize as an uh, unregulated data stream. Uh, secondly, on chronic disease management. And finally, uh, living independently. Uh, and these usage cases fundamentally drive how we've architected the system, um, from a technology perspective, and more importantly, how we've architected the business model in attracting a set of ecosystem players end-to-end -end that get compensated for delivering these types of solutions. Okay, here's the funny, the funny aha slide. Uh, we have a number of interfaces. So um, Continua is a standards organization. Um, by that, and the joke that I make is that we try very hard not to be innovative as a standard organization. Art, I'm sorry, some standard organizations actually borrow from other standards organizations and create interfaces and interoperability that drive market adoption. So co what Continua has done, I think, is quite, um, uh, quite marvel and ingenious in and of itself in that it's adopted a number of third-party interfaces. Uh, let me walk you through this. So I'm usually a walker and talker, so I'm not good about taking this. Is there... Oh, no, no, just a microphone-wise. Oh, okay. All right, so on the left-hand side, I'm just going to give you a quick overview here. We have the first interface, uh, which is fundamentally a PAN or LAN interface. Its uh, sole purpose in life is data collection, data collection over a number of transports. We've, uh, we've actually standardized today on uh, three uh, transports, one uh, wired, i.e. USB, and two wireless, one Bluetooth, uh, and sh soon to come Bluetooth Low Energy, and Zigbee. Um, so we have an actual PAN interface that's been certified by a number of devices today um, that really drives a health device profile over a number of these standard transports to um, collect data and then move it into an aggregation point. 
That aggregation point is something we've coined an application hosting device. It comes in multiple form factors. It can be a mobile phone. It can be a tablet or a computer. It can be a gateway. It can be your gaming console uh, in your home um, where information can be aggregated uh, and then fundamentally uh, interfaced with the end user. Um, and there we have a second interface, one that we've uh, certified um, uh, and, and driving interoperability. is something we call the WAN IF or the WAN interface. There, Continue again has borrowed from industry leaders, especially in the healthcare industry, um, and driven data syntax standards over very standard SOAP protocols with the IHE, the Integrated Health Enterprise, and uh, HL7. That interface goes into two ecosystems. Uh, one ecosystem that we refer to as a, somewhat of an intermediate ecosystem player that's providing a telehealth service. This is where we qualify a WAN sender. This is where information can go into um, uh, a consumer uh, or even um, um, healthcare uh, intermediary that wants to interface with the consumer or with the user himself. It's very much focused on measurement metrics, um, i.e. biometrics that's coming from the end user. Um, that interface can go back to the user in a, in a, in a feedback loop, if you will, um, but also can be transferred back into back-end systems over a very standard uh, HL7 interface that we refer to as HRN, uh, Health Remote Networks. Um, whether that comes from the application device or from the back-end, again, a standard interface that's driven by HL7 to a number of back-end players, whether it's a service from uh, a diet or, or fitness provider, um, a disease management provider, you're obviously your health provider, um, or can even be interoperated into a number of PHRs or personal health records that come from um, institutional players like Microsoft, Google, Dossier, and others. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, so the good news is there's been a lot of very uh, um, uh, focused individuals at a systems level to think of our industry fundamentally as an ecosystem end-to-end -end and to drive what I believe, what we believe to be a, a very robust uh, and flexible architecture. Um, it all starts obviously with data collection. All f and where I think it's relevant, obviously, for this workshop, all the way back to a sensor device that is generated over a very standard set of transport interfaces. So we're excited about the architecture. Our job today is really to drive engagement with the business community, both at a regulatory perspective, which we've been very active with the FDA and FCC, um, and with the provider networks themselves in driving, you know, fundamentally what is a technology that we believe is in place today. As I mentioned earlier, we put out guidelines. Um, our guidelines are um, in version 1.5 today that are available to the public. You can download these from the Continua website. Um, our role, fundamentally, is to certify the three interfaces I described. So fundamentally driving interoperability between devices and systems, um, very much at a systems level, in driving a certification logo that we aspire to be really the backbone to standardization and openness with respects to telehealth or tele or M health ecosystems. Um, we've been doing this for some time, so I just want to show. Here's an example of a, our first public interop demo, uh, October two thousand and eight. Uh, a lot of known players that were participating across the architecture here from the PAN sensor devices, again, people like Roche and A&D and Nonan, um, building a number of personal healthcare devices that connect over both wired and wired, in this case, wired and wireless, i.e. Bluetooth and USB, into simple aggregation devices like PCs in this example, and then out into backends, either from IBM or Google, and in this case, an EMR from Partners Health as well. Um, so 2008, this initial demo, and we've been certifying products ever since. Lots of certified products um, that really range from systems level products. What I would refer to as a system is, you know, silicon vendors in particular, like Texas Instruments, that are putting out reference designs to allow an ecosystem of OEMs or device manufacturers to build um, to build more and more either sensor devices or aggregation devices. And we've been seeing an uptake over the past two years of our certified pipeline really driving adoption on the device side. Um, the real work ahead of us now is interfacing them into real healthcare delivery systems, which is a big part of our effort, especially on the regulatory side, as we work with the FDA hand-in-hand -hand, um, on, on 
regulated I environment, especially in preventative care. So just to close, and I promised I was going to do this in seven minutes, um, we really were trying to drive interoperability in an open, standards-based uh, interface. We believe in much, like, and Art can attest to, um, huge economies of scales in terms of uh, getting this technology to a point where we can actually drive adoption. Um, we believe these distributed systems approach really manage risk as well across the ecosystem. Um, so we do have quote unquote different roles that have been defined as part of our architecture that um, that drives uh, different vendors to participate in different ways, i.e., distributing risk across the entire system. Um, from our perspective, you know what we've built is a collection of tools uh, to collect and represent data. And again, we try very difficult, we try very hard rather not to generate any intellectual property here. We um, pr provide syntax to data that has been standardized either by the IHE um, or HL7. And that's sort of a key uh, statement as we try to drive back into meaningful use um, ecosystems, especially in the U.S. with EMRs heavily, heavily adopting um, these standard interfaces. Uh, many device specializations. Our goal is to continue to drive at the IEEE uh, standardizations around device specializations. Uh, today we have nine or ten that have come out of the IEEE. This is a group called the, the uh, um, uh, 206, 11073 group at the IEEE, I'm sorry, um, that drive these standard um, specifications and uh, we work very closely to bring even more on board. Um, and then finally, and again, I just wanted to leave the room here. The biggest effort here uh, and where we'd love to see more engagement of business leaders, uh, regulatory leaders, is how we work together for integrated data flow. Uh, integrated data flow both in regulated environments in EMRs um, and frankly in unregulated environments today in PHRs where we see a huge influence uh, in driving this, you know, th these types of systems and these types of technologies. Uh, lastly, just a sh shameless plug on my end. Uh, I, I do run a little software company. We are here in the Boston area, and we've uh, we've driven um, uh, the architecture to continue as well, end to end, and really focused on game applications. We believe our j our euphemism is that we think healthcare is not a health problem; it's an engagement problem. Um, and so, how do we look at healthcare and healthcare systems as something that users are already engaging with and integrate with systems and tools that have engagement uh, in, in driving more and more consciousness and awareness of personal health. And that's who we are. That's Elburst Networks, and we're in the Boston area. So thank you very much for your time. I think I was seven minutes. Um, okay.